Hello everyone, in this post I'm going to be showing you how to make these very popular nested earrings with the little leatherette straps. So these are really nice because they use a relatively small amount of material, so you can use your fancier acrylics um, or your really expensive patterned products and you're going to get your best bang for your buck. They're also really nice because they allow you to create a variety of different sizes. So you can go with small, you can get really large ones, and that's just done by intermixing the different pieces. Likewise, you use every piece right down to the little center circle of the design. So these are a really, really great, easy project that I'm gonna show you how to build an Illustrator, and then I'm gonna show you how you would adjust it in the Glowforge interface to make the most use of your scrap materials. So let's move this to the side. One thing I actually wanna cover before I exit this image here is that these little leather straps, you need to make sure that you have the right product for your machine. So you can see I have all these really fun metallic colors. I actually cut these on a cry cut Cameo 4 and then I, um, or I think it's called Cricut. I call it a cry cut, I'm sorry. And it's not even that, it's a silhouette Cameo 4. But the point I wanna make is most Faux leathers have PVC in them, which is incredibly toxic and cannot be cut in a laser because it will damage your machine. Now, the cork fabric is laser safe, and you can also get laser safe polyurethane leatherettes, but you need to make sure that you're buying the right item. So you can hand cut these, they're really very simple, or you can use another machine, or you can just make sure you're using laser safe faux leather. So, and the same problem happens with real leather because you often have chrome tan and that's also not safe for you or your machine. So let's open up Illustrator now that I've gotten my safety note out of the way. And I'm gonna show you the free file that's included in the post that's linked below, or you may already be in the post, but this is your free file. It's basically a set of nested circles with a little centerpiece, and then the two little leather strappy items here. I call them like the little tacos, folders, whatever you wanna call them. So I'm gonna show you how to do these first, and then I'm gonna show you some other shapes that you can make. So you don't need a lot of tools for this. This is a very, very easy project. You're gonna go first to your shape tool and click and hold. That's gonna allow you to select what type of shape you wanna start with. So for the circles, I'm just gonna start with my ellipse tool. I'm gonna to click once on my artboard, and then I'm going to select my size. And I already have it set at 0.5 inches, which is great. But if you wanna set it to something else, you could also just type in your measurements. So for example, if I wanted 15 millimeters, all you have to do is type in your size and then what your measurement is, and it's going to automatically translate that for you. I'm happy with 0.5 by 0.5, so I'm gonna click OK. So here's my shape, very simple. I can see its size up here in the transform panel. And then my next step is just to start building the outer rings. Now your instinct may be to go draw more circles, don't do that. Go instead to Object, Path, Offset Path, and select your Offset Path Size. Now, I think this 0.1389 is actually pretty much exactly what I wanna do. So I'm gonna leave it at that size. Um, you can turn on and off your preview to check. I'm not gonna worry about my joins yet because this is a circular shape and so that doesn't really matter. And I'm gonna click OK. And then you're just gonna keep redoing that until you have the largest size that you want. So you're gonna to go to path, offset path, and with that object still selected, it's gonna select the last one. You're just gonna keep going. So offset path, click okay, object path, offset path, click okay. And you can keep going until you reach the large size that you want. Now I'm gonna check that by clicking this one and I can see that my size is 1.6 and that's fine. So I'm gonna leave that be, that's the basics. It's very, very easy. Now for all of these other shapes, all you're gonna wanna do is go back to your shape panel, click and hold, and select what tool you want. So I'm gonna select the polygon tool. I'm gonna to click once and I'm gonna select my number of sides. So I'm gonna do an octagon here. And then what I want my radius to be. So let's say 0.6. There we go. I'm gonna scoot this out of the way. I'm actually gonna scale it down because the radius on a polygon is a little, it's just a little different. So you can see the actual width and height was not 0.6, it was something else. But if I wanna kind of set that to the size I want, I can come up here to my transform panel. I can make sure that this is checked to link your proportions and I can hit 0.5 and there we go. Now I have a little polygon that's 0.5. 
Now, one thing to note, you may notice the stroke got smaller. This is just a really small, like super not important thing, but I wanna mention it, that when you have an object, you can tell it to transform the size of your stroke as well. If you're doing a different project that may actually really matter to you that you don't want the strokes changing. So you're gonna go to window transform and then you're gonna uncheck scale strokes and effects. Just a really small thing that might be important to you at a later time. I'm gonna leave that at point one. And then all I'm gonna do is the exact same thing I did before. So object path offset path. Now here is where your miters will matter. So you can do a rounded miter a miter or a bevel and it's going to give you a different effect in this case i want the mitered sharp corners so i would do that and i would just keep doing what i was doing offsetting path until i have as many rings as i want for these shapes it's also very very simple for example all i did was take my ellipse tool and draw an ellipse and there you go so it's really really easy to make these for the slightly different shapes the way I actually do them is probably some wrong way. I draw a rectangle and then I'm going to go to my pen tool, click and hold and have my add anchor point tool selected. I'm going to find the center. I'm going to add an anchor point. I'm going to take my direct selection tool, which will allow me to individually select my nodes. And then I'm going to click. I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to click the up key. I'm going to click this one, shift and my down key, or I can just, I can manually move them too, but that makes them even. I can also click and just hit with my arrow key a number of times and do the same on the other side. That's the basics, very, very simple. For the inner part, I can actually just do the same thing I did before. Start with this shape, I'm gonna option drag it. Go to object, path, offset path, and done. There, you have that shape as well. So very simple. You can get a little more complex, make really complicated shapes. I think these geometric shapes are really nice. For this inner one, all I did was draw some lines using my line tool, which is also under my shape tool. And then I set them to a different color because I plan to score those. And you probably saw those in that earlier example. Now for the little earring holes, I find that this size works really well with the pinch bales that I show in the blog. And if you click that, you can see it is 0 0.0454 inches. I think you could probably just round that up to 0 0.05 inches and you're gonna have a nicely sized, really delicate hole. You're gonna have to check your jump rings or your hardware to see what size it is and what you need to do there. Um, one last little thing, just make sure you don't get too close to the edge with these holes, but these do cut perfectly fine on the laser. I didn't have any issues getting those to work. So those are the basics of creating nested earrings. Once again, super simple. Create a shape, go to object path, offset path, add any little decorative elements, and you're good to go. So I'm gonna save that as a PDF, which I've already done. Minimize that, and I'm gonna come over to the Glowforge where you can see I already have these uploaded. Now, this is just a residual image from something else I was cutting. But let's say you want to make the most use out of a really beautiful fancy acrylic you don't want to end up wasting any so what i would do is then copy this guy down here and i always stage my objects off of the artboard and then copy them and move them in here that way if i accidentally scale something or manipulate it in a way that i didn't intend the originals are still here at their original size and it's easy to kind of go just copy a new one. It just keeps things neat and orderly because I come back to my files a lot. So let's say this is um, my scrap piece of acrylic and I want to fit something in here, but maybe I, I need like a little smaller of a shape. So I could scale this down, but I wouldn't do that because then I can't use those with any previous ones I've cut. Instead, I'm going to right mouse click. I'm going to ungroup them, which thank you, Glowforge for adding this feature. <laughs> it makes life so much easier. And then I am going to delete the outer rings until it fits the scrap piece that I'm trying to do here. And so undo that, um, try and grab it. So the only other thing is, gosh, selecting things in here is not always easy. There we go. So let's say that that's the size I wanna do. I can then copy and paste that and sort of fit that wherever I wanna do. So that's the really nice thing about these is even if you can't fit the whole shape, delete some of the outer rings and cut some of the inner shapes and then you're gonna have a ton of different patterns to mix and match. 
as you can see, if I can drag this image back over, come on image, you can make it, oh, apparently not. So I was trying to drag back over my other image, but you can basically see what I'm doing here. So for my, as far as settings, it's all in the post, but I just cut these using the medium red acrylic 99.9% .9 of the time. Um, and there you go. That is a very, very simple, really easy to do project. And I hope that will help you use your scraps to the best of your ability and save you some money.